welcome to the let's just jump into it Let's try that intro one more time. Welcome to the channel, people. If you're new here, I'm Brandy, and today I'm sharing some inspiration to create textured looks without the cost using some pretty budget-friendly supplies. You may be surprised to find out you have laying around your house. So let's check into what you're going to need. I will have these linked down below in the description box for you. I'm starting this first one with this little 8x10 from Dollar Tree. I'm sure most of you are familiar with these little canvases. I am then going to take about a tablespoon of joint compound and put it on this plate in four different spots. And then I'm going to take these acrylic paints and mix them with the joint compound in their individual little spots until I get the color and consistency that I want. If it gets real watery, you want to add more joint compound. You do not want it super watery. And then I'm just taking this chippy brush and we are going to create a sand textured effect to make a little portrait. And to mimic that, you're really just going to take the chippy brush and kind of pat it like the whole time. You're just going to pat, 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 pat. <laughs> Patted everywhere but I did mess up here you're gonna see me immediately touching the colors and you don't want to do it you want to start by the top and blend your way down so see how I actually separate this pale blue the next level up I use different brushes to keep the colors separate and then blend down and then if you cannot do separate brushes, then just clean them. It's not a big deal. Whatever is cost effective for you. There was no method to this picture in case you're like wondering what is she creating? I was just trying to create some, you know, waves of color, some type of, I guess, abstract art. I'm not really <laughs> sure if that's even the right term, but it looks like some mountains, I guess, okay? For all of you, it's like it's a mountain. It does kind of look like some mountains. Next, I decided to just put a little bit of blue highlights once it was dry and felt it just needed something. I wasn't sure what it was. And then I was like, I know what it needs. Some Mod Podge and some glitter. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of this. Have you seen the little texture short I made, huh? Have you seen it now? Well, as promised, I will have long versions to my shorts. So here this one is. You're gonna take a drill bit and use that to cut big holes in the bottom of one of the planters. And then I use those shears from Hobby Lobby to finish cutting out a hole. Then I'm using the same metal, these are actually metal shears. I can link them below for you. To clip off this protrude. You see that hair? Why is there a piece of hair always with there that's definitely mine not the dog so I'll take the blame for that and then I take the painters tape and put it all around the middle and attach both of these I really love the texture of these plastic little planners on their own which they have tons of them at Dollar Tree go check them out go look at them anyhow I used the dowel to pull up the tape to attach them on the inside and then took a smooch of hot glue just a smooch and put it in between here to hold them together next you're going to just pick your colors and mix them with the joint compound and you're even going to just paint some layers in here and layer the joint compound it really is no method to this i literally did a layer of the joint compound with the paint and then i did some regular paint and then i at the very end i took a white chalk paint i was sanding in between each layer of the joint compound just to get any real raised effects i was 
going for a Venetian plaster type look with this. In short, it just creates like layers with a marble like end finish. And I did add some satin Mod Podge to give it that shine at the ends. But here's just more of me layering between the paints and the Mod Podge. So when I did the final sand, it came through like this slightly. Let me know what you guys think of this one. You can use any glass vase you want for this or glass whatever for this really and create this look. I happen to just really like this one from Dollar Tree. Who loves Dollar Tree? Raise your hand. <laughs> Anyhow, I took a paper towel to recreate a spray sandy or orange peel type texture which is just they're really similar in look but you want to make sure you're blotting and not smooshing like this because smooshing like that is definitely going to be a pain when you're doing on the glass it doesn't stick easily but it kind of does <laughs> just depends on the way you put this on here so blotting works best especially to get this look once it was all dry i decided to go ahead and be extra and add <laughs> some twine to the bottom of it you can use whichever color you want of course remix them as i said earlier remix it so it's yours and then i'm using the gorilla glue gel for that long hold and the hot glue for a quick hold let me know what you guys think of this one For this one, you'll need two different size washi tapes or three, however you really want to create this at the end of the day, I used two. And then I'm cutting the end of this popsicle stick to mimic a trowel-like effect. This is a called like a hawk and trowel hack. <laughs> now you really want to use the real materials if you're doing that for real, for real, but here we're just mimicking it and creating hack look type appearance. So we're using a popsicle stick because it's convenient for many of you watching, it may be free <laughs> so that's what we're rolling with I took different colors just like I did with the other ones and just gently placed this one here and then took the popsicle stick and created like waves throughout each section going in different ways this look really mimics like a straight elegant overlapping layers and I just really like how it turned out once it dried you want to remove that washi tape before it completely dries and let me know what you guys think about this one. For this DIY, we're going to use a glass jar and I purchased that from Christmas tree shops and this one is from the Dollar Tree. Now, I have Christmas tree shops local to me. If you're new and you are not familiar with me, you will see that in my content. I love Christmas tree shops. I try to hold off because it's not local to everyone and it's important to me that you guys can recreate exactly what I do if you want, but sometimes you guys gotta give me creative freedom, okay? Anyhow, I there was no method to this madness either. I just smeared these all over. I just smeared the cream color joint compound all over both of these. I want it to just give you some inspiration of how you can take two completely separate items and put them together to make them look like one unit. And then for, I want it to really give this like a textured, even more look. So I'm adding the baking soda and I wanted to show you how gritty this can actually make it compared to how smooth it looks with just the joint compounds. So I mixed that up with some white chalk paint, some baking soda, and joint compound to really give it like a thicker textured appearance overall. And then just took it and painted everything so it all matched. I added some twine in the center to give it a different contrasting color. And that was it. Let me know what you guys think of this one. For any people watching that have feel like all this is too difficult for you, this right here, this is all you. All you're doing is taking any color of joint compound you want with any 
item that you enjoy looking at and want to just add a little bit of an extra level to that item and smear it everywhere put a glove on smear it everywhere don't be afraid don't have any method to it just go with it until you come up with a look you like then take a paint and paint over it if you want i'm just taking some white and then i'm gonna just brush up from the bottom make it look a little blendy with some dirt like giving it like I dropped it in the dirt and I really like this one let me know what you guys think This DIY is going to give you guys a sense of how you can take three pieces of something and make them look like they were meant to be one piece of decor. I purchased those rollers off of Amazon, these little wood pieces from Walmart, and this flexible stencil from Dollar Tree. Now, I'm using colors that are going to match my future bathroom rehab <laughs> that you guys will see if you're watching my home project Mondays I put out every third Monday of the month. And I chose to use this roller on here and started messing up with it because I wasn't pressing hard enough. It could have probably have been done a little bit better, but I like once it dried, I really actually ended up liking how it looked. Now I wanted this to look like one solid piece of a unit, so I put it on a raised little, we're just gonna use our, <laughs> we're gonna use our paint. And then I used a spoon to do around the edges. For this one, I did not end up liking the way this came out. It looked like somebody like punched it with some pinholes or something. I was not happy about it. So I switched up rollers and rolled it on out. This also, this one is the only one that did not clean up well. If you guys see me use this in a later video, it's going to have joint compounds stuck in it. So don't judge me. Don't do it. It it was rough it was rough on me okay but the other one's cleaned up fairly easy and then for the third one because i'm doing three of these i took some chalk paint and just painted it white and then i'm taking this stencil by the way if you see this at dollar tree get it i absolutely loved this stencil wait till you guys see it this once I peel it off and again you could even cut these in sections and do all of one if you want it I really was trying to just oh it's so pretty I love it let me know what you guys think For this one, you wanna take any large stencil of your choosing, I'm using a 12 inch one, and then I'm going to create fake wood. That's right, fake wood. You can use real wood if you want, but I'm doing foam poster board, and I cut it to 14 inches, and then divided it equally with a tape measure, so I had three pieces. And next, I'm just using some Waverly Wax, antique Waverly Wax, and we are smooshing it on here with a glove. That's right, it's super easy. I really like doing this technique. It's fast, it's easy, and it looked like real wood when I was all done. It was beautiful. Next, you just take your joint compound and your color of choice and you put your stencil on here. If it is not a sticky stencil, you wanna make sure you're pressing down the stencil as you go while you're spreading on this joint compound. If not, it's going to smush all underneath your stencil and you do not want that to happen. However, there might be a little bit of bleed, but it's not that bad. Let me know what you guys think of this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, people. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give me a thumbs up before you go. And if you want to see more videos with me, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Each like, each comment, and each subscriber really helps me grow. Until next time, bye!